We're going to start by talking about a property of matter called charge. And that's even how we'll define it. It's just a property of matter. Now, you've probably heard of charge a few ways. And the way you've heard of it that's probably most relevant to what we're doing is when you charge this, right? You charge your cell phone. And you're charging, of course, the battery in your cell phone because it stores energy. And when you plug it in and you charge it, what do you look for? You look for the little lightning bolt. Right? The lightning bolt tells you it's charging. So in fact, that is all relevant to what we're talking about. The charge, when you charge your cell phone, you are putting in the kind of charge we're talking about here. You're not actually adding charge to it. You're actually raising the charge to a higher energy state. And then when it flows out, you use that energy to do something else, like light up your cell phone screen. And even the lightning bolt, there's a reason it's a lightning bolt. That's relevant. We'll be looking at that as well. So, uh, oh, I got a, an email. Sorry. No, just kidding. Um, so you charge your cell phone. That's what we're talking about here. Let's look at the, uh, where charge comes from. So it's actually not just a property of matter. It is a fundamental property of matter, like mass. This is not just something that kind of depends on what kind of matter it is. All matter um, can have charge. So we're going to look at then at the deepest level, we're going to draw one of these. All right, here's some circles with N's in them. And then here's some circles with P's in them. And then flying around are some E's. So you know that this is an atom. So we're going to think about where is the charge inside this atom. Well, there's three kinds of particles that make up an atom. There's protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So we have a proton here. We have a neutron. And there are electrons that fly around the nucleus, the smaller, lighter electrons fly around the outside. And bonus points if you can quickly say which element I just drew. Correct, lithium, very good. Now, let's look at the charge of each of these um, microscopic particles here. So the proton has a charge of plus one E. The unit is E, so E is a unit of charge. It means elementary charge unit, and you can see it's a very convenient unit when you're dealing with subatomic particles because it's one. It's really defined as the charge on a proton. So elementary charge unit. The neutron has no charge. It's neutral, as the name might imply. So it has zero E. And while the proton is plus one E, the electron is negative. It is minus one E. So charge can be positive or negative. And that's all. So we also, though, want to think in terms of the macroscopic unit. We don't always use microscopic, because if you think about it, if every proton has one E, there's a lot of protons in an atom, and then there's a lot of atoms in an object. So the, the number of the charge could get really big, big numbers. So we also have a macroscopic. So if this is micro, we also have a C, which is for Coulomb. And that's the macro. And you can see the connection is uh, pretty big. So 1 E equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's a big gap between atomic and macro scale. 0 E, of course, is 0 coulombs. 0 is just 0. And then minus 1 E is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. This is, of course, plus. Okay. So you could then use this to convert between the two. You could figure out how many coulombs of charge are on a single proton very small, maybe on five protons, still very small. Or you could figure out how many E's of charge are on some macroscopic thing. You can use either one with that conversion factor. You can also think about, we've talked about the charge of the fundamental particles that make up the atom. What's the charge of just the atom? We aren't going to break everything we do into fundamental particles. We also have to think about bigger things. So let's go just a little bit bigger and say the atom. Well, then I would say the total charge on an atom or anything is just the sum. You just add up all the charge. So the total charge here is plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. That's plus 3. Minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. That's minus 3. It's 0. Right? This is a neutral atom because the charge is balanced, and they make 0. Okay? So that's the basics of charge and where it comes from fundamentally. And now we'll start scaling up and looking at larger things.